everybody. This is Jim the Keys bartender coming to you from Blackwater Siren on Blackwater Sound right at the Jewfish Creek Bridge here in Key Largo. I'm here with Bill Witzinger. Say hi, Bill. Hey. Hi, Bill. Uh, today's episode 47. We're uh, going live. We're attempting. We're using a, a tethering device since we didn't uh, pre-check the uh, password for the uh, local <laughs> yeah, Wi-Fi. Well, something like that. No, I figure we'd try it here. Uh, and uh, it's episode 47, we call it obs- uh, Obvious Observations and the WWLD. What do you think that stands for? Oh, I know what WWLD stands for. We had T-shirts made up for that. Oh, really? You yeah. did? What, what would Leon do? It's not Leon. <laughs> for What's for us? What, 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 come on, who do we know? <laughs> what would Luke do? Yes, Luke do. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, actually, I actually somewhere I have a WWLD T-shirt. Oh, that'd be good. I think we should. Uh, of course, it's that. got the it's got an angry bald Russian on it. That would work. That kind of <laughs> work. Uh, is Leon a, a Russian guy? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, obvious observations. What would uh, Luke do? Uh, but that, they're two separate things. And uh, apparently, Luke isn't with us today. He has an early gig, so we're. Uh, He's, uh, we were wishing him his best, and we're just going to be watching our uh, monitor here because sometimes if you lose your signal, it'll just stop. It it'll just drop. stops. Yeah, it just stops. But if that happens, have no fear. Uh, we are recording locally. So no, we're not. I, it says we're recording we're, as we're streaming. We're recording the stream locally, but if the stream stops, that stops. Oh, really? Oh, jeez. I know so little about that. <laughs> um, the, today, what was it? Last week, uh, was it Saturday or Sunday? I went on my hosting app, the uh, Spreaker, and I became it became apparent once again how little I know about technology. I once worked for a <laughs> software company, and I... What did da- you do? Marketing? Uh, I was salesman. <laughs> How'd I, know? I was a really good salesman too. I bet you were. Uh, I, and and the tech guys loved me because I'd sit and listen to them yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, pretend that you were, that you were actually cared about what they were saying. I did care. I did care. I tried to get as much, and I I think they thought I was trying hard. And if you try, it, you know, people really appreciate it. So I went on Spreaker, and there's a uh, I'm developing a mobile app and. Nowadays, uh, I'm going to go back a couple of years. Uh, about four or five years, four years ago, I tried to start a, yeah, can I get the same thing you're getting? Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, uh, four or five years ago, I started uh, a delivery company called Delivery for the Keys. And I had to do a whole bunch of things like website design and things like that. And a whole, I got way over my head. I was just doing, um, I went to uh, GoDaddy. I used GoDaddy, f- used their templates. Uh, I had someone help me design that. And then I had some guy come up. Eventually, I, I was going trucking along, trying a couple things. Uh, I was trying to do commercial and private delivery in the Keys. And uh, you've heard me describe in the, uh, in the Keys, it's just one long, tenuous stretch of US-1 that goes from Mara Marker, uh uh, 126, which is right at Homestead, and goes across, uh, we call the stretch, all the way down. I'm pointing. I don't know why I'm pointing because you guys can't see it, but I'm looking at the uh, overseas highway right here as it goes across Jewfish Creek, and it comes into Key Largo, and it heads. you can make a left and go up to a, a gated community called Ocean Reef, or you can head south approximately 106 miles and get to the furthest point south in the uh, United States in Key West. And because of um, the, the way the Keys are, they have uh, unique, like many islands and things like that, but we have that one road. And when people make deliveries here, except for UPS and the post office and things like that, a lot of these trucks are coming back empty. And I was trying to figure out how to do a circular route, which is really difficult because you go up and down, back and forth, and there's very little you can do. And I was trying to figure out how to do all these uh, logistics, the logistics of delivery in the Keys. But I was working, um, I'm, I'm telling our listeners about how I thought about how, how we would develop delivery here. And then I had, had a website and I had to get a Google Voice number. And I did all that on my own. And I had someone help me with some website design. And on that, some guy, uh, 
he calls me up out of the blue. And he says, what you need is an application. You need an application. And uh, he told me, uh, and he took, we went to Starbucks, and he got me thinking about it and stuff like that. And then he looked, I looked at the application he designed. And it was pitiful. Was it good? Oh, no. It no, was it was horrible. <laughs> and I'm not a tech guy. I looked at it. It was horrible. It looked like, it looked like a high school student designed it 10 years previously. I mean, it didn't look like current technology. Had, it didn't look had, like any had, had the old uh, had the old JavaScript stuff. I don't know why the the images I didn't like, the design I didn't like. And he said, "Well, you know what? In order for you to do it, you're going to have to make significant investment." And, he got, and I'm thinking, "Well, for like I'm thinking like 800 bucks." Oh, and he like goes, fifty dollars, man." Well, no, he, I was thinking 800 bucks. You know what he said? Six thousand dollars. And he, he said, "You got to borrow money." He said, "You know what? I don't even know what the company was at the time. Dude, I didn't know what I was doing. No, but." But this was four years ago. And then all of a oh. sudden, all these new things started coming out, all these uh, these menu-driven applications. I helped a girlfriend's buddy set up a Wix site a couple weeks weekends ago for her business. It took 15 minutes, and it's slicker than anything that I could program by hand. Oh, no, it's amazing. It's amazing now what you could do. But they had these applications. What you do is you set up, you get your logo, you get, a, you get the right size images, you get the text you want to be in there, you, get, you load everything up, you load, you know, get it all connected and i went i went to um there's all these sites and I, went, I i and i'll get to the, the the section where we get to the keys baby rentals and that's where the delivery company became we don't, keys. Rent, we we don't, don't rent, rent babies. babies we don't rent babies <laughs> uh, <laughs> we rent baby equipment and i keep on having to say this because i don't want to get in trouble for human trafficking uh because babies uh don't make you money it's the equipment that you need for babies that make you money i mean I, I'm sure there's people that make money from babies. <laughs> <laughs> there's surrogate mothers and there's people yeah. in foreign co- countries that sell their babies and stuff like that. But once again, Keys Baby Rentals is equipment rental. So I'm back to this. So I'm, I, I uh, decide with uh, Keys Bartender. What else could we do? You know, business cards. I know you're working on business yep. cards for me. We're going to have that. Uh, that's great. It's always great to have, lay a business card on something because not everyone's total tech savvy, but almost everyone has a smartphone nowadays. Everyone has a computer. But, you know, these cards are coming equipped with um, where they can download these things. So with um, – luckily with – hello. Uh, luckily with um, – this uh, I saw. I saw the need for an application, so people could just have the the, the show would yeah, reside right, right on the phone. There you go. There's an icon. Boom. The latest episode. You hit that, and it's like so. Spreaker had that, so I filled out everything. Oh my god! It said it told the size of image. It had to be between 400 by 400 pixels, up to 12 by 1400. And they're like, and I tried fitting in this sweet, sweet spot, and they kept they wouldn't load. They wouldn't load. So I ended up. There's certain images. Uh, it's not that I'm so crazy about putting my image, the logo I designed on there, but that's the only one that seems to work yep. and fit in the things. I mean, for size requirements. I mean, eventually, we're probably, I'm, I'm most certainly probably going to change the design or yeah, it's going to keep it someplace else. Hand to me. I'll give them to you in any format you want, any size you want. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Well, the thing is, I fit it. I check now. That's I know, actually really now easy. I know, now I know how to check the size of it. I can check, you know, right click and I can check yep. the size of an image, but it wasn't loading up. But I did all that, got it all set up. I put all the text in I thought would work. And, you know, there's always tuning up we can do with this. And it's, uh, you know, just a, a small investment. I think for decent return, and right at the end they said you got to develop, you got to set up a Google developer account. And I said, "Oh shit, what the hell is that? What the fuck's a Google developer?" Basically, account? you give them your email, and that's it. That's- yeah, yeah. And I thought it was just real tight. I go in there, and, <laughs> and it was twenty pages of uh, waivers and and agreements that you uh, you read and you sign and about content and things like that and then i put those in and i got the id and and then i submitted the application and it said within a couple it could be today could be tomorrow i guess by friday i'll call them up and say hey what's going on why why isn't it posting yet because they said it could take a few days and a few days to me is two maybe four but once three, you get the five two, it's a week three. I know two, maybe four. I'd say that's which is two, maybe four is lanes right in three. Yeah, two is a couple. Yeah, two and a couple. Three is a few. Yeah, but after five days, that's a week. So I, I think I would have said just a week. So the application that I have right that I design right now is 
well, I design. I just put it plugged in some things. You pick some colors and things like that. But according to what this guy would have charged me, I would have been 60 times the char- amount of charge for something that looks, I mean, arguably subjective, but 25% as good. Maybe not even. It looks like it's 15-year-old. T- it looks like, you know, how like if an old Soviet thing. <laughs> and I know that the Russians are really good at ha- I, You know what? I don't think they're particularly... I don't think they're particularly good at hacking. I think they're very organized at hacking oh, no, and doing pretty, it, they're, they're, and they're, they're very blatant and very blatant. No, we have they're, very. They're, they're they're pretty good at it. No, but we're we're not as organized about it, and that's kind of like real, like you know, the dirty oh, tricks thing. Oh yeah, there there there's there's. I know yeah. we have it here, but we're not we're not setting up. What I mean, there we are. We did. Well, now we are. I know we're, we're we doing all the dirty tricks that they're doing. I don't think we're. <laughs> I don't think we're doing them as well. <laughs> We might not be doing as well, but we're we're definitely doing all the dirty. Well, they did they did do that shit to the Iranian nuclear program, where they um, buried a bunch of I think there were worms in their software programs and and they ran and there it, it fucked up their centrifuges. Yeah, and it that was the Israelis. Their, what? That was the Israelis. Uh, the uh, the U S. The U S. was probably the one doing the the, the hacking stuff. Israelis are very innovative and stuff like that, but for. You're talking about a country of like six and a half million people versus a country of 320 yeah. million people. We have the muscle and and the the the, the size of brain power, yeah, to do those things. The problem also with being a heterogeneous society, we also have a lot of leaks. <laughs> you know, when you're in like, I mean, that's the thing. Hey, there's something about it. We're never going to be yeah. two people can keep secret. Yeah, and then one's dead. When one's dead, we talk, uh, did we mention that before? I don't know. I, we probably. Have. Well, luckily we don't. We're not very. Luckily, we're not very. You, you and I are very secretive. We're very <laughs> open about our no, I but our, our things. Obviously, if we were secretive. We wouldn't be doing very well yeah. in this because we're not. We're yeah. our job. I think is to reveal secrets. Yeah. How are we doing on time there? It's oh, just like I don't want to chew we're up the time with. We're we're at, uh, we're twelve minutes. We're just wow. I mean, yeah, but we got to move along, man. I can't believe that chewed up all that time. Well, okay, let's get to the fucking baby Reynolds thing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, when I was doing, uh, <laughs> bring, 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 yeah, yeah. What uh, happened? Hey, I'd like to rent a baby. <laughs> no, no. What happened is I'm doing a delivery thing, and someone said, "Could you, could you get a hold of a crib for me?" And I go. And it wasn't a rapper that asked this. It was a person with a baby. <laughs> and I did a little research, and I called up on the mainland, and it turned out it would cost like 400 bucks. And a crib cost with everything, let's say everything you need to, to, to stock it, 250 bucks, a full-size crib. And then you got to yeah. put it together, put it together and, and deliver and, and deliver stuff like that. So I went, I think first once I started delivering, they were asking 400 bucks. The first one I did was 200 bucks. And then I realized, you know, after I get it set up my system down, if I'm delivering it locally, if I don't have to go too far, $120. And then I started adding pack and plays, uh, uh, high chairs, um, car seats. Uh, strollers. Strollers, yeah, strollers, jogging strollers. So, and then people come down here. And it's funny, I haven't really been pushing it. But after Irma, it was really dead. And I don't mean uh, the the business. We were people were tentative to come down yeah, here. Nobody wanted to come down. They thought no the one had come. They thought out. it was a shithole. They saw Puerto Rico and thought we're like Puerto Rico, right? But yeah. I mean, how many people? Um, a lot of the seasonal rental. I heard people having to beg their seasonals and seasonals. When I say seasonal, people that rent every year from the same people, and these people depend on that income. Yeah, you yeah. know, they were yeah, they weren't gonna they weren't gonna come down because they thought the keys were wiped out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there. I mean, there were some areas that were hit hard uh, down south of Marathon and Big Pine. That area, there's a lot of homes that were destroyed. But uh, where we are, we got almost even Isle Morada starting to come back up. Yeah. You know, some of the, the some of the big resorts are coming back. Yeah, um, I know Chica, of, Chica just opened again. I think uh, Islanders open. Yeah, they did their soft opening. Yeah, I think that Islanders mean. Yeah, uh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's early. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, yeah, they don't yeah, have all like their I said, we up. said, and we weren't we weren't bullshitting you guys when we said the keys were open to business. We were open for business when it did. You just didn't, <laughs> you guys didn't believe us. We were open for business Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday after, yeah. yeah Wednesday well, no, after. Thursday the uh, the catch up was it up. Thursday? Okay, I thought it was they Wednesday. open they open up the keys on a Tuesday, but no, you couldn't come down. No, you yeah. couldn't come down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, they open up when they open to everyone. That Saturday, yeah, something like that. Like only four or five days later, and people started bitching. Why are they open up the keys to tourists and stuff like because that? Because we were, need to make money. Mm-hmm. 
because we love our locals, couple, but none of us will spend any money. Yeah, you know, you need you need to have people coming in uh, money, and we have musicians. A lot of my my friends here, my good friends, are are musicians. Um, I like to hang out with the creative types, and uh, that we need to have those music. Um, the, those tourists to come down to come and listen. We got the locals that come out, but do you really to fill out the room? We like to get yep. those. Yeah, the, the tourists do do fill it out. And I got it. You know what? I hand it to. I hand it to. Uh, the new people that came down. A lot of foreigners came in. Mm-hmm. You know, there's foreigners that were coming in here. They didn't have to, and they came in. I see them and come in, yeah, well, and they they come in, getting, and go, and I thank them. I they, thank them when they come good, in. They were getting a good deal too, because the hotels were giving you yep. a pretty good cut rate. Yeah. And hey, listen, if you need, if you, if you were thinking about, if you're, I know I had people in Fort Lauderdale and Miami. I got some French friends up in uh, Bonita, uh, Bonita, Bonita Springs. Bonita. Bonita, Bonita Springs, right? Is that above hmm? Fort Lauderdale? Uh, no, that's over on the other side. Okay, no, okay, no way. We friends up at Deerfield Beach. Deerfield Beach. They're, uh, the French families, uh, Valerie, Jerome, Nadine, and, and all these people up there. And uh, actually, Nadine's coming down with her family. I think family and friends, some friends. N- in a couple weeks, I think we'll have them on the show. Oh, uh, that'd French be fun. friends, and we did a podcast in French from uh, Lakeland, <laughs> and, we, and I'll, I'm gonna I'll promote it in. Um, in France, and I wanted to bring up another subject too. Uh, we'll get back to the baby rental things, but I want to look in when I'm listening to some podcasting sites. I notice the pacing of the speech is sped up. I may have hit something like two times. Really? Yeah. Is there such a thing where yeah, people you can speed, speed it up? Man, it fired. Man, you got to really pay attention. It's like blah blah blah. blah. I'm not, not talking about. I mean English. Okay. They're speaking English like. French people speak yeah. French. Or they could be doing a compression algorithm that doesn't work on your phone. That'll oh, you do, think so? That'll do that, too. Hmm. I bet, I bet that's it. I bet that's it. Hey, there's a, there's a site for sore eyes. There you go. We got the, the beer corona truck. guy. That's his, last, uh, that's his last stop. Yep, Gold Coast on the way out to Keys. Yep. Um, that's a, the lifeline. So... The baby rental things started up, and I started getting calls for it. And I brought in a, a, a partner last spring, and then we had the storm. And uh, I was bringing in so the guy can help me take the load. He's a little further south, about 15 miles south, 16 miles south. And I said, you know, this would be great to have someone else. Well, and you got to understand, something. 15 miles in the Keys is a long it way. It is. It, it, us, it gave man. us further reach. And if we could ever hop, skitch, uh, uh, hop, scotch, hop, skitch, and jump, ha- hatch, <laughs> skitch, and jump <laughs> down to um, Lower Matacum Bay or, or uh, Layton and get someone in there, then we got Marathon all the way up. And that's a. Actually, that could be like a. I think it could be. I really believe it could be a full time job. I think I, I, think I could probably. Uh, Pull in that, but I, we want to do this thing. Podcasting is what we enjoy. There's our hobby right now. We'd like to make it. Uh, we'd like to screw it up by making our avocation <laughs> a vocation, yes. which is always. I always say it's a mistake. No, I did. I was spinning, but I've, I mean, I've been it's a musician for forty something years. And no, I'm just saying we're do, we started something. This is what we started doing a hobby and saying we're going to screw it up and, and we're going to make it a job. It, it's 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 a job like any other job, and yes, you can make money at it, but you have to work really hard. Yeah, and we're 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 and this is uh, just uh, a sign that we're working really hard to do this, and just like the Keys Baby Rentals thing. Uh, oh, and it's heating up again, and I got to get my hello. I got to get um, uh, you do my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to get uh, my partner back up to speed. I think he was, um, I I think he was unimpressed by my initiative after uh, the. Um, Oh hell, we had, her, I mean, I think a lot of people had Irma fatigue. We had a we had a we had a guitar player who was working with evacuated and just never came back. Mm. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. A uh, nice guy too. You know what? But he, he, I, you know, I could, I, I, I think I was wired like that guy, a little, a little stressed, and uh, with him. Uh, but, but to get to get back to it, uh, I lost my train of thought again. We were talking about the. Uh, Making your, uh, we're talking about keys, baby rentals, and yeah, get yeah, your getting back, back, and I got to make amends to them and stuff like that. Make sure that we're making money. Oh, those people were at my bar yesterday. Boy, they make their rounds. Yes, they do. I think I told them that we're going to be here. That's <coughs> that's one of the things. So, 
to move on to another thing, uh, do, do you ever watch Curb Your Enthusiasm? You no. ever heard it? Yeah, you were Seinfeld. You saw Seinfeld. Yeah, I saw well, Seinfeld. Well, one of the, uh, the creator and producers of Seinfeld was Larry David. And, um, okay, so there was this bit. A lot of things from Seinfeld were from the, from the minds of, uh, right. uh, of Seinfeld and Larry David, who originally was, he's a comedy writer, was on Saturday Night Live, he wrote, and stuff like that. So he's... Larry David is a multimillionaire many times over because of Seinfeld from the residuals and all that stuff. And what happened, there was one uh, episode where his buddy is uh, jogging down the street and he runs into him and he's walking down the street and he sees him and he comes out and his buddy is wearing his jogging suit and it's uh, Super Dave Osborne. His name's Hello. David. His name's David Funkhauser. I think it could be his real name. David Funkhauser is. He's really he's a great character, and he owes Larry fifty dollars. And he goes, Larry, I want to pay the fifty dollars back. And he reaches inside his sock, inside his. He takes his sneaker off, and he reaches to the bottom of the sneaker, and he pulls out a, a folded, sweaty, fifty dollar bill. That's okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's Larry. That's Larry Davis doing it. He's, he's taking it, go like this, and he has them like he doesn't want to touch it, and he opens up his pocket, and he drops it in there, and stuff like that. And the rest of the episode, he's trying to unload the fifty dollar bill. Now, I would have, you know, I never realized I would have just taken it home and thrown it in a sink and yeah. then thrown it in a dryer if it was if you're that much a. A germaphobic. Hell. So this past week, someone came in. A woman loaded it on you. Yeah, this couple came in and they had a, a couple uh, glasses of wine and they paid. And the lady brought out a twenty dollar bill and she goes, "We were biking and it came out all sweaty." And I'm like, "Hey, listen, I'm a bartender. My mo- my mother is the queen of uh, bra money." I said, "I said I, I took the money and I put it in there. I didn't think anything of it, but I just thought of that episode, the sweaty twenty dollar bill. Yeah. I mean, I'm just think of it." I mean, a bartender turning down. If you're a bartender and you're a germaphobe, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. Um, if you're a prostitute and you're a germaphobe, which is kind of funny. If someone took the sweaty yeah, money. No, we don't even want to go there. I know, but they took it. Let's say it was in their G string. Guy had it underneath there and his little ball sweat on there or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he, they paid her, and she goes, no, I'm not going to take that. Oh, and what do you mean? That, that thing was inside you. What are you talking about? So um, I. Uh, in that case, we're just, I'm just laughing at that lady, and I just explained to her, and she goes, oh, I never even thought of that. I said, um, how would you feel if someone gave it to me? She goes, money's money. Yep, like, that, and I like that, and I said, you know what? Then you are welcome to pass that sw- sweaty 20. Uh, also, um, someone, so it was a middle, I think last week we had the end of the Olympics, and we talked about the, one of the commentators, you still haven't looked at the guy. There's going to be a progression. If you can see the guy that was a commentator, they could show the progression of the guy's outfits. They kept on getting more outrageous and outrageous. I had not went seen on. that. Sorry, I, I was tied up watching curling. You know, so many people watch curling and stuff like that. And, uh, <laughs> American <laughs> men, we never heard of it. And all of a sudden, Americans men, we, we, win, we win an event. It's which, a, it, no, it was fant- it's a fantastic bar sport. They never showed it before. We're all sitting at the bar watching this. No, like, but all the athletes have the the physiques of bowlers. Yeah, I know it's it's great. It's great to watch at the bar because you can yeah. it, nothing happens real fast. You can Actually, sit there. And I watch. love that the, the girls Korean team. There was a girl that was the one. I guess the stone thrower, mm-hmm. the one that slid the stone. I thought she was uh, super kind of hot and cute in a uh, in one. Of, I always liked the smart Asian girls in college, and. Um, I was kind of geeky myself, so I, I kind of admired them a lot. So, but while we're watching it, there was downhill skiing and stuff like that. So we're watching downhill skiing. We're watching freestyle and all this stuff. And um, oh, dude, yeah, we were watching freestyle. Hungar- and I was trying to. Did I tell you about the Hungarian skier? No, I was trying to figure out how you can spin that much and not puke. Oh well, fuck. <laughs> well, you never went on that tiny little fucking marathons when you were a kid. Remember a little mile? There were there were no more than like four feet across. Oh yeah, they went twenty miles an hour. Oh, easy that. And you get it. You get it like a teenager. You'd be a little kid, and you're sitting on it. And you're t- and what you do, you hang off the edge, and you swing back and forth by pulling in and out. And eventually you get the thing going so far, sometimes you lean out. The centrifugal force would throw your ass out of there on where I used to most of the playgrounds I were. They weren't grass and stuff like that. Yeah. It used to be out like sand. gravel dun, 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 dun. or shit like that, and you go rolling. Oh, what are you talking about? The 1960s and 70s playgrounds? Oh. 
on Andrews Air Force Base. Man, I had more bumps, scrapes, and bruises. Okay. Well, outside outside of Washington, D.C., Andrews Air Force Base was one of the largest bases in the United States, continental United States. It's where the uh, Air Force One leads from. The um, They put up this 30-foot-high circular slide, the circular slide there where it was go. enclosed, yep. and it was just brushed steel on the outside. And you <laughs> so... It, it's 95 degrees yeah. in July. You get on it. It must have been like 180 degrees. Inside, you yeah. hit it. You just sit and you slide down it, and you're just sliding down with the heat and the abrasion. Your skin is just sloughing off, just like that. And then you end up getting. You end up going right. And then right in there, you had the swings. They had the swings. And what do kids do when you have the big ass swings? They jump. You jump. Yeah. Well, you swing yeah. and you jump. See if and you can it get was, the fence. It was and. Uh, they put all these fabulous. They spent a lot of money on equipment, but they never did anything about landscaping. No. So it was all rocks. We jump in, and then we had a big drainage ditch. So after you're done jumping off things, going yeah, down go, the you go wash up in the drainage, the, ditch. the toaster oven uh, uh, <laughs> slide. You take your your bike and Evil Knievel. We met, Evil Knievel was jumping uh, Snake River Canyon with. Uh, well, he he first did the the. Cars and then the trucks and then the buses, buses. and then, then he got the rocket, which how fucking <laughs> stupid is that? If you have a go. rocket, a rocket can take you into space. He couldn't make it across a canyon with a rocket, so it was a poorly designed rocket. Yes, it was Snake River Canyon, which was not like he should have been able to jump the Pacific Ocean with a good rocket. <laughs> no, luckily, Elon Musk wasn't born yet. Yeah, I know, and he um uh so Josh. The next story, we'll talk. Uh, Josh met Evil Can Evil. Josh met. Do you know that? No, I didn't. Josh dated a girl who's he was her like step uncle or something like that, and he used to go and play on his ranch or something like that. Or uh, play. I think he was an adult when he uh, when he couldn't have been. He had to be a kid because Evil yeah, Can Evil be a kid. Yeah, because well, Josh isn't that old. He's forty, <laughs> almost forty now, was right? He? Yeah. Okay, I thought he was close to. 40. So yeah, Evil Can Evil broke. Uh, Lots of stuff. Uh, yeah, most, as many, has he had many breaks as there's bones in his body, but I'm pretty sure he didn't break every bone in his body. So it's almost impossible to break some bones yeah. without killing yourself. Yep. Because they're so tiny if you break. I don't know where we got on that fucking part of the thing. But, okay, so we got all this, you got all this amazing stuff going on. You got the freestyle, you got the curling, you got the figure skating, you got the, the luge, the skeleton, the bobsled, and... And I know there's a lot of NASCAR fans. I apologize for this. But in the middle of the, we're watching people doing 560s or 720s, you know, two complete 1080s. flips, 1080s and shit like that. Can you put on a NASCAR? And I'm looking at it and going, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Can I check? Wait, hold it. Whoa, whoa. And I'm thinking, fuck it. Every time I'm there, I'm missing someone doing a flip or doing a long jump and shit like that. And then finally they go. You remember NASCAR? And they go like sport. this, and they started. They started talking politics and stuff like NASCAR that. NASCAR is a religion. In no, the but South. they said, "Well, this is the only." They go like this first, and they go, "This is a true American sport." And they go, "Okay," like this. I said, "Well, there's that. One, at least you got some. They're getting progressive." And I go, "You got the transgendered uh, a NASCAR driver coming in there." And they go, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the big thing. Didn't you hear about it? And they're like freaking out. They go, who is it? And they go, yeah, yeah, the guy guy just came out. He's, you know, he's just getting hormone treatments and stuff like that. He's about to do it, and it's going to be pretty good. Just like um, with Jenner, you know? And they go like that, and they go, wow, wow, wow. Who is it? And they go, Jimmy Johnson. And they go like that, and they just freaked out. And I just, uh, I'm laughing. And, uh, oh, my God, those people got so pissed off. Oh, I'm sure. They're really, they're really um, like I said, Na- NASCAR is not a sport. It's a religion yeah. mm-hmm. in the South. It is a religion. How we doing here? Oh, we need to get another round. Yeah. Do you want to you want to hog the mic for a couple minutes? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll hog the mic and talk okay. about stuff. Here, I'm gonna go get it. There you go. I'm going to talk a little bit about Blackwater talk Siren. About talk about <laughs> no, we're not going to talk about uh, the hemorrhoid problems that all musicians develop. We spend way too much time on our feet. I want to talk about Blackwater Siren. This is a fantastic place. We're sitting up here on the uh, stage, and we're looking out over uh, Florida Bay, and it's just gorgeous. Sunset's going to be uh, about another hour and a half. Should be a nice one, a little overcast. Going to get all sorts of good uh, good colors up there. Watching the boats come in and out. Watching everybody sit here, snack, and have a couple beers. 
It's just a gorgeous day down here in Key Largo. Couldn't ask for a for a nicer afternoon. It is getting a little warm already, though. That's uh, not looking forward to that. It gets a little warm in the summer. Temperature gets up, and we all start sweating and sweating and dying and hauling equipment around. Here we go. There we go. Jim's back with beer. Hey, yeah, that was quick. I was talking to people that were uh, patrons at the the other place I work, but I do it just like I wouldn't talk about a, another girl in front of another girl. I'm not going to talk about that bar in front of another bar, but it is a no, wonderful place, is. and this is a wonderful place. I we love just, this place. We were just talking about I was just talking about that. Right. I was telling them what a nice place uh, Blackwater Siren mm. is. Oh, right now, well, uh, you know what? People ask me, and I will reiterate this. They go, if you're in the fucking Keys, why aren't you showing the video of where you are? And I said, this is an audio medium, and I don't want to screw anything up. Eventually, yes, we'll do one. Maybe we'll do, like, uh, I think uh, maybe we'll do, like, a, a pre-show, all audio, 45 minutes, and do a video eventually. We could, we, a show. We, we could do all those things. We could, but we it's going to be a live show. We can do a video stream very easily. I know, I know. But if you do a video stream while we're doing this, less people will likely listen. Because think about it. How many TV shows do you listen to? Tell me how many TV shows you listen to. Uh, about the same amount that I watch. Well, you don't watch TV. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, no, but imagine. <laughs> okay, listen to a TV list, uh, someone that watches TV. I, I don't like listening to TV without the accompanying video. And there's a psychology behind it because you seem like you're missing out. And they say, I don't know all the nuances about it. Now, listen, that's the thing about doing the shows live. If you want to come, when you come down here, come and see us, you can see that. But eventually, we'll do that as long as it doesn't detract from it. I did, I, you know what? I could have a losing strategy, but we'll go down. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the captain of the Titanic had a strategy. <laughs> yeah, I'm and, sure his strategy was not. Yeah, yeah, was not to hit an iceberg, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you know, to make sure everyone got off, and well, and uh, once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. echo the statement everyone else knows. You know, Kate Blanchett, or what's what was her name in the movie? Well, Whatever her name was in the character in the movie is Ruth Rose. Yeah. You know, Rose. You could have moved. There was over. moved. There was moved. <laughs> there was <laughs> there was room on the chest of drawers. There could have been two people on that. <laughs> I don't know why. I never I never know why that uh, yeah. guy had to sink. If you really love them, I'm sorry. There's no room for you. I love you. Bye. That's the way there to end a relationship, you know? There's another way to That's end a relationship. pretty permanent. Yeah, that is a permanent way to end a relationship. Don't have to worry about her showing back up at a bar drunk. <laughs> no, no. And go like this. You tell me you're going to be fucking home in 20 minutes, oh. but it's three <laughs> hours later. Here's your fucking ring, you know? That's what happens, you know? Yep. You never know. Hey, listen. Let's, this week, I'm. Um, it's lunchtime. I come in. And uh, an obviously straight guy comes in, and he was totally fascinated by my, but let me say, uh, my unextraordinary height. <laughs> unextraordinary. Because I'm, I'm at the border of You're tall. You're tall. You're not that I'm not, tall. Not done. Yeah, that's why I said unextraordinary. I'm at the beginning. I'm at the lowest part of tall. I barely reached a requirement for, there was a show, uh, there was a, a dating club called the Towers Dating Club. In, it was in <laughs> Philly in New York, and you had to be over a certain height, and the girls had to be a certain height. And this guy I knew, a friend of mine was 6'6", six, six, and he goes, we got to go there and stuff like that. And you meet girls. I said, I love tall girls and stuff like that. And I said to him, uh, and, and he goes, we should go. And I said, well, I'm right at the bottom of it. At 6'4", I'm right at the bottom of it. I don't, I think... I think 6'4 was the bottom of it. I said, I don't want to be the shortest guy. <laughs> I don't want to be the shortest guy, guy in the room. In room. And, and, and you know what's really, I, I did that one. I was once before with basketball players, and it's a great, it's a really interesting perspective. I think that develops your personality. Um, I know a lot of guys and, and women that are very, they're short themselves, they're not that tall. They said, uh, you know, psychologically, taller people get or are more seen as Better leaders, better looking, more desirable. There you go. But if you've seen really tall people, they sometimes they could be kind of dorky, <laughs> yes. kind of stooped over. They slump down. And they shrink the most as they get older. Um, and you know what? And I always say this, and I don't know if I said it on podcast. If anybody goes to say, well, I, oh, I wish I was tall as you, I say, well, listen, let me explain this to you. 
I unless they dramatically design spaceships differently, <laughs> tall people will not make it off this planet. <laughs> now, obviously, if they're like this, you know what I mean. If they're in deep uh, uh, thing, yes, yes, I understand that I part. Was, I was laughing. Sandy and I were on a cruise uh, right before uh, right before Christmas. We went in mm-hmm. November. We went on a cruise, and my wife is terribly five, five foot. Five foot. Maybe she carries five herself one. taller. Maybe five one. She carries herself she, taller. She was she was laughing at me because I'd get I'd be cussing every time I was coming out of the shower. Oh, we hitting that goddamn thing. <laughs> I right? was whacking. I couldn't. The, the damn shower head wouldn't go high enough. I had a duck to get under the bar and all that. Well, shit. no, and and and, and uh, right it, when you're coming through, like there's a lot of shower things. It's like when you stand up, it, it's um, they if you're. S- if it's if you're way ho- higher than that, and it's not a big a deal, because you're looking at it at your eyes. But when it's right above your eye level, you, uh, you an inch or two, you're always smashing it. The yeah. um, the subway uh, in 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 the mid '80s, when I was finishing up college, uh, there was uh, they put these new Kawasaki sub. I think they were Kawasaki. The, the Kawasaki designed the subway cars in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> on on a Japanese scale? Well, no, no, no. Obviously, they gave uh, the when when the subway systems buy them, what they do is they give them the dimensions they want. They don't decide. They don't say, "Hey, this is the size you're getting." They say these are our requirements, and they design them that way. Fuck! It was right a half inch below the top of my head, <laughs> oh. and it's amazing. Oh. I don't have like right on the ridge on my top of my head. Don't have like a stripe gone from that because you're always jump on a subway. Because of the way you uh, embark and de- dis- disembark, you're you're running, you're moving real quick. You're going boom, boom. And you're hitting your head. Are we still recording? Are we still? Yeah, doing no, we're still we're still on. We're, oh, we're doing great. Good. Where are we at now? Uh, we're at uh, 37, 37 Holy minutes. Holy shit! Look at that. Oh man, that is one beautiful truck, man. There's nothing not more beautiful than a refrigerated beer truck there you go. pulling in, and nothing sadder when you see a refrigerated beer truck pulling out, knowing it's almost empty. Well, that's, that's a good thing. It left all this beer down here. I wonder if the, if they have beer left in there that they can offer a slight discount to Probably people so not. they can come empty. Now, what was it? That used to be, uh, what were the trucks up north uh, that you could honk at and pull over? Hams. The chips? The ha- hams? Hams. Hams, hams beer. beer. You could get the driver's attention and he'd give you a beer. We used to do that all the time. Up north, it must be like a pussy truck because guys are always trying to honk the horns at women to get them to pull over. You know, stuff like that. They think, hey, you know, bump, 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 bump. No, I remember the hams trucks. You could, yeah. you, you, you could, you could honk at them enough, and they'd pull over and hear a beer. Hams wasn't like in Philly that much. I think I may have seen it, but it wasn't that big a deal up there. You see it? Was it? Was it more like in the country? Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd get them down. Well, I don't know if they'd do it in the give city, you like, we, How much could you buy from them? Oh, no, they wouldn't even buy they just give you a couple. Here, have a couple beers. That's fucking great. Oh, man. Yeah, you can't, can't do that shit anymore. Yeah, <laughs> w- w- okay, whoa, whoa, okay. You know what? Um, I wanna, We're going to finish up with the Urban Dictionary thing. Okay. But I want to talk about some beer stories. And I want to tell my, um, when I was 19... I got a tour of Anheuser-Busch at Busch Gardens. It was a weird thing because at 18, I was still fascinated by the rides. And, you know, you talk to the girls that are working the rides and shit like that. I took my but niece, it was at Busch Gardens. And I took had to my move. niece and nephew to Busch Gardens. Oh, yeah? And they begged and begged. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Never crossed my mind that it's Busch, Anheuser-Busch. Beer Gardens. all over the place, man. Dude, I walked in. I'm like. Oh, this is the best thing ever. You guys go ride all the rides. I'll be sitting in the beer tent. Yep. If you're, uh, <laughs> you know what? Maybe someday. Come check back with me in a couple you hours. You know what? Maybe someday because we're, we're, we drink this. But you know what? I like a nice, hey, we're going to drink that. And we got some uh, sponsors where I, I met, I met a guy. Uh, and we're going to get back to the beer thing. Keyed up distilleries uh it's going to be okay, handmade um uh, and and uh his name's john john and his wife are going to be distilling uh vodka handmade vodka and tequila here in the keys and um we're going to be sampling that product here eventually uh once they start getting there they're already distilling up on the mainland but there they're going to move their inner operation oh, down here cool. you know i would like i think that would be perfect for us 
I think in doing some beer, we're going to get some, uh, uh, maybe we'll get some beer from uh, Isle Morata or, or not Isle Morata. Well, it could be Isle Morata or. Uh, I'm thinking Keys Brewery. Well, we'll see who bites first. There you go. You know what? We're going to put the line out there. Whoever wants to call, you know, whoever wants to stop. We're starting our live podcast now, uh, the live feed. So we imagine the listenership go up because we have the people listening right now. There you go. We have, thank you all, everybody yeah, out there yeah. in podcast land. And I think because it's so early right now, you're, you're riding uh, – people that get in their cars right now, they hopefully they'll be able to listen. Um, what was I again talking about? The beer story. Beer story. Well, my buddy, uh, Ed, and I, we had a loft apartment in Philly. At one time, we wanted to go white water rafting with a bunch of friends in West Virginia. We're in Philadelphia. We go with this guy named Jeff, who's this uh, a big, big motherfucker, man. He was a boxer. Badass dude. We're riding in a Jeep all the way across, and we're riding up to uh, near Morgantown, West Virginia. But we're in a far southern western corner of Pennsylvania, and we stop at this brewery. And uh, we go in there, and we bought... Uh, it was pretty decent. It was, I don't know. I forget what the beer was like. But what they did, they bottled it. They bottled it in champagne bottles. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it was these green bottles, dark green bottles. Uh, and I go, well, what the? I guess maybe they got bottles of Andre and bottled them up. And we got, we bought, they brought four cases. You know, we barely, fit, you know, we had all, of, stacked all up our in stuff the back in of the Jeep. Yeah, stacked in the back. <laughs> and yeah, and there's something about when you're driving in a, a warm Jeep with, uh, 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 you know, uh, beer, and it was really kind of shaking up when we got, you know, the Jeeps aren't the most uh, yeah. soft to ride. They were you know. then. They, they're still not now. Yeah, and uh, yeah, when we took a tour, whenever uh, uh, there was like something going on, if there was a vineyard or something like that, a buddy of mine, I'm getting another one named Steve Kowalski. I'm gonna, t- I gotta send him. A, he's in, um, God, he's gonna, he's gonna get really pissed off. He's got, he's in Sweden. He's in Sweden now. He's uh, from Northeast Philly. Went to Father Judge. I worked with him. He's a comedian and a teacher over there. Has a lovely family. Uh, married a Swedish woman, and um, I think he's just got back from Ireland. And one snowy day in Philadelphia, we decided to take my 1980 uh, Levi edition AMC Hornet (laughs) 30 miles north in a snowstorm to Bucks County Vineyard. There you go. Uh, I don't know why. We just drove up there on my bald ass tires and we got a tour of this vineyard where there's no, well, tour of the vineyard. We went through the tasting rooms and we ended up buying like three cases of wine. Of there just hanging out. Two guys. I mean, that? that's that pretty gay? Yeah, could be. It's a wine tasting. It was pretty be funny, okay though. If it was a brewery. It tour. was funny. We just go like this and go, let's go up. Let's go up and then we went up there. I think we went up and we ate someplace. Well, we stopped. Yeah, we stopped someplace. We drive, did nothing to do on that day. We decided to drive back. But whenever there's liquor involved, you know, at least you're not like driving all the way up. I did once take a two hour train trip up to see this bar that I thought was in, in Doylestown. Uh, in the middle of Bucks County, Doylestown is really, it's, it's, I, I don't even have to describe it. It's like a, a small, mid sized town, like uh, maybe 15,000 people, but maybe 20. It's just one, it, now it could be like 50,000 people. But they had this really great Irish bar in it, and they had that, the, you know, with the wood lettering out yep. front and stuff like that, and it looked. The kind of Irish bar is not like a dumpy Irish bar, but not too overly nice and all this stuff. I took a train. I went all the way downtown. I lived in the far northeast. In order to get up there, I didn't want to drive because I wanted to drink pretty seriously there. So I, I took a train 12 miles south, and then I took a train, I think it was 33 miles north. So the whole thing was like 45 miles and, and thing yeah. where it was only it was only 25 miles from my house. But the train trip was forty about forty seven miles, and it took it took uh, upwards of like an hour, uh, uh, three hours, instead of forty five minutes. Liking that guy. Oh, that's how this guy's system. driving. This guy's driving down with his. He's got uh, the Fred Flintstone brakes center, going. Yeah. He's driving his truck and he's dragging his leg behind him with his center console is all, uh, old beat up center console. Crab in. boat. Crab boat. Yeah. So. And listen, we're gonna we're coming uh, towards the end, and I want to reintroduce our our uh, the 
Urban Dictionary since we haven't done yeah, that in months done and Urban months. Urban Dictionary in a while. So I'm going to pass. I'm going to give you the um, easy ones first. I could almost see what she had for breakfast. That's a whole line. I could almost see what she had for breakfast. Or you could say, I could see what she had for breakfast. Skinny chick? Nope. It's when a girl's wearing a really short skirt and you can ah. see her vagina in her a-hole. And all, uh, you know, butthole and stuff like that. There you go. So, um, okay. All right. I thought I would. How about horizontal hugging? That'd probably be the animal with two backs. What's that? Is that another one? Yeah. You making a reference to my reference? Yeah. Okay. Now go with the one, the textbook. Six. You got it. You nailed it. Yeah, that's the, that's no, the, that's the it's, beast a, with it's, two it's backs. trying to say horizontal hugging. It's kind of trying to alleviate it and saying, yeah. oh, well, it wasn't, we weren't making love. <laughs> you know, it's just that we were just horizontal hugging. So, like, yeah, yeah, you won't get in trouble for it. Okay, here we go. This is the next easy one. The last one's going to be hard. I mean, S O D O A, yeah. That's what he said. Oh, uh, no. Uh, it's just the last one's going to be hard. Okay. And that was a preference. Uh, a patrimony. A patrimony. And there's Chris Lute. Where is Chris? Mm. I don't know. What is a patrimony? A patrimony. It's not a partridge family marriage, is it? No, no, no. A patrimony is when you break up with your ex and you still give him or her money for the apartment that you shared. Oh. A patrimony. Okay. Okay. A double pipe classic. Hey, Chris. A double pike pipe classic. Is that from either end? Oh, I can't believe you're going to get the one, the hardest one. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, th- what I'm, is thinking it? That's, uh, I'm thinking that's two guys, one girl. No, 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 no. Oh, no. good. Okay. No, no. It's not that dirty. Oh, okay. It's foul. It's foul, but it's not that dirty. Go ahead. It's rough. It's uh, a simultaneous fart and burp. Oh, <laughs> double! It's a rare, it's a rare occurrence. So it's when you, and I imagine, and I would, if I was going to judge it, you, it can't be like a, you know, for a fart. It has to yeah. be like good, both, good, both, s- both, both of them, same thing. And it can't be that that one that strained burp yeah. while you're doing it, it's or if that. you, yeah, a synthesized burp. Uh, so we have our new uh, things here. So uh, and and we can also finish up. With what would Luke do? I want to add this one thing. Okay. Okay. We all know Luke. There is no telling. What, okay. Well, hold Luke on. No, 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 no. This is the, this is a separate thing. So Luke, we all know that Luke has all different types of things. What you, you really can't guess what Luke would do to do something. You know, he doesn't. He wouldn't. Sometimes he say he wouldn't to stick a guy's penis in his mouth, and then he says some things that he doesn't. You never think that way. But we're not. He, this isn't the thing. Okay, Luke comes in. It's a uh, middle of a drought, no pot. Two months. Luke comes across uh, a couple, and now I'm coming in a fict- uh, fictitious circumstance. <laughs> and I'm asking you, and you're going to tell me what he does. <clears throat> uh, a couple uh, is at the, let's say he's at the Caribbean Club. Luke's playing. During break, he talks to him, and they tell him he has a really good pot. Why don't you come back to our room at the Marriott? And we'll smoke some pot. And we have a lovely patio and stuff like that. And we'll have some drinks and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And we'll give you a ride home afterwards and stuff like that. Fucking great. Luke, you know, le- you know leave his van there at the Caribbean Club. Go and smoke to him. But upon arriving, right, they're Furbies. And Furbies dress up like well, the first two people. No, well, Furbies are, are people. Yeah, Furbies are people that dress up like stuffed animals and stuff like that. And they have sex with each other. And they want him to watch. And stuff like that. And in, 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 in order to get to the pot, he has to watch. And, okay. and it's what he they no, have. See, have. They have some first. really good weed and stuff like that. And he has to hang out and watch it. And it's real debauchery. And all of a sudden, there's going to be another guy shows up. And it turns out it's going to be a threesome. And it's not just a traditional threesome of the two guys and a girl, but the two guys and a guy. And Luke has to watch all that stuff. No, no, no. And what I would leave this, I posit to you, what would Luke do? Okay, let's see, Bill. I, I, I think, I, you know, I think with Luke being the talker that he is, he would probably talk him out of the smoking the dope at the at the at the club. Are you saying he wouldn't smoke any dope? Because listen, the only way he's going to smoke the dope is if he sits down. No, yeah, no, 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 no. There's not an option. 
I don't want to. Yeah, no, no, no. no uh, yes, it's a yes or no. It's a binary. Yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go ride with somebody to their house. No matter. He's not going to touch. He's yeah, not going to no, touch still, anybody. That's just a, a general thing. You don't. If you don't know him, you're not going to get in the car with him and ride off. Well, he drove there. Let's say he drove there then. Yeah. No. I don't know Would he sit there and I'd watch? Leave. No. He'd leave. He said, "Oh, there's our friend Chris Loot. He's a uh, musician here. You want to sit down, man? We're going to be signing out. And you want to talk?" Yeah. We're just going to be finished on. Okay, okay, come observe. Well, hey, uh, it's Chris Lute. He's also he's also my hairstylist, and he 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 yeah, is probably uh, the tastiest guitar player that I personally. Yeah, he know. is a great guitarist right here. Um, and we're we're actually wrapping up now. Uh, we do, uh, 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 Chris. Uh, I told you about the podcast. We're just wrapping. This is a new venue for us. All right, this is. I, I'm sorry, I just burped. Uh, we um, it wasn't a double pipe, was it? No, it was not a double pipe. There you go. A double pipe classic is when you burp and fart at the same time. We got that from the Urban Dictionary. Uh, do you know what a hor- horizontal hugging is? No. That's uh, sex. Um, a patrimony. A patrimony. Do you know what that is? Is that getting a divorce? It's kind of like that. A patrimony, but it, it's Urban Dictionary. It's so when you're paying for your ex's apartment while you're a patrimony. So you got to remember her in Urban Dictionary. There's a, I could all, I could, I could see her. I can see what she had for breakfast. That's a statement. I can see what she had for breakfast. Do you know what that means? That means when a girl's wearing a real short skirt and you see her vagina and bee hole. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's pretty much. Short, the skirt is too short. <laughs> exactly. You could tell if she had a natural Co- childbirth cover that or thing one of us. Strippers that are from I, Philadelphia. I apologize. I loved strippers with cesareans. Uh, is this hot? Yeah, that's, uh, it can be. Here, put that. Oh. Watch the beer. Oh, Flip that over for me. There you go. What I like about Flute. the strippers with uh, the cesarean scars it's another option of where to tuck the dollar bill. <laughs> I, well, that was a, I, I, I'm always keen to, to lick them and stick them. Lick them and stick them. We went, at, okay, and you know what? There's a whole bunch of things with guys, too, you know. The guy has a little, I'm sure there's women out there when they go out, the guy has a little belly, and you got that fat. You got the boobies. That's the dad the little, bod. They like the that. The dad now. bod. You got the, you can tuck a little, uh, you could tuck some bills under the booby, mm-hmm. on the male man booby, mm-hmm. or under the gut, or under the chode. <laughs> the chode. <laughs> oh. uh, do you know what the chode is? No. The exact area of the chode? No, the oh. exact point of chode. Chode is from the um, the top of your balls to your anus. Ah, chode is a, a, a alternate term for taint. Taint, yes. yes. But chode is for a guy. Taints, uh, I, I, we used to call it chode. Chode's, I think the immediate area, south and beneath your balls. Your chode. I remember some guy was doing it. He just He was jumping a chair. Oh, and broke and his... he hit the time. He hit the uh, the back Damn, of the chair, hurt. and he said he broke his chode. He had to have his taint amputated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is these are the same guys that introduced me to. Um, I we uh, we called it upper decking, and they were oh, top shit in the top of the toilet. Yeah. I love upper decking. Do you decking. know how to do it? Oh yes. There's no, a technique no, no, no. to it. No, the technique when to do it. No. no. Oh, okay. break into their room. I, I, when they're not I didn't there. know that there was particular no, 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 etiquette. No, no. no it worked in, at a party. It, uh, when a woman <laughs> or a man uh, that you want to disgrace is ignoring you, if you try to engage someone in the bathroom line, and let's say you turn around and go, hey, lovely party, isn't it? And the girl goes, like, turns around, blah, blah, huh, blah. I don't talk to people like you. Obviously, you're a six and I'm a nine, you know, and stuff like that. You so you go in, you make sure you don't give her the place in front of you. You go in, you make sure you have. And you go upper deck. You got you upper deck. And hopefully you have. A very not a solid one. <laughs> a loose, a loose, a loose bow loose, is ideal. A loose bow. A good it, loose A one. good loose one. You drop that in the tank. And hopefully there's a catty woman behind the woman. <laughs> that thing. So what happens? Right. So there's a perfect storm. Yeah, for, there's a perfect storm. The, that's right. a, that, and that's, a, that's when you do it. It's just like when the waters of the Gulf of Mexico are above... 85 degrees, and there's a storm coming in and stuff like that, and that's a Category 5 coming through. There and that's a, catav- that's a Category 5 top shelf or upper decking, and then you got that person. I did have a friend that did leave a um, uh, whole 
turd with corn on it on a girl, another snooty girl's seat in a uh, in, a, in a, a college class, which I I didn't. That guy's a lawyer, and there was no nuances to that. There was not nuanced. I disagree. That guy's name is Phil Valentino. He told me this story. I don't know if he did it or if his friend did it, but if it, I think his friend did it, and he also killed. The friend accidentally killed a puppy by accident because the puppy was he was leaving a girl's house and a puppy ran out the door and he slammed the door to oh. him. Like, I know that's horrible. That is horrible. But what do you expect from a guy to leave a, a corny turd on some girl's seat? I, I, I know that a lot of puppies have bit the dust due to reclining chairs. They yeah. like to get under recliners. Okay. Many a dad has crushed many a puppy. Yep. Or sitting on them. Yep. 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 Okay. Kick I don't know how we got so morose about yeah. that. Well, well, what else we got? No, I think we're pretty much done, man. Yeah, I think we've it's, it's uh, probably time to wind it up. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, we uh, we want to thank uh, Chris Lute for stopping by. Uh, this is our first fabulous live stream podcast in Not a long time. God, six months, six months seven probably. months, mm. seven months. We we normally record. And uh, we did that I, off a of tethering off my phone, and hopefully, yeah, it's it actually, looks like the, the, the phone is actually. I, I just really had well. a live stream before I got here. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a really live stream going uh, pretty soon. But uh, I'm going to thank Chris. And uh, this Chris. is appreciate you coming yeah, by. And this Wonderful. is Jim the like Keys. Bar. Oh, we are doing. Uh, that we're we're at Blackwater Siren. Uh, please come down if you're listening live and you're local and stuff like that. It looks like a great time. We got beautiful weather out here. Uh, it's. Uh, the temperature's perfect. Um, it's been very nice. The last it's been very days. nice. And uh, w- um, tomorrow at five o'clock, five o'clock, we're going to be doing a live show again at the Catch in Key Largo. Provided we can get the internet to cooperate. Um, if not, I'll do it the same way yeah, I did there. I got, I got that, a couple. That's, that's I'll have to real well, up so. my gig plan so I don't get. Uh, Chewed Don't get up on killed that. with the overages. Yeah, you know what? It's worth it. There you go. On that, but you know what? I'll use. I'm going to use the private network. We know the private network. Yeah. So what? We'll go on there. Uh huh. Okay. So what? Uh, yeah, we'll just. Okay. This is Jim the Keys bartender. I want to thank everyone. I'm going to leave Bill to sign off for us. Thank you guys so much. We do appreciate you listening. We'll be back. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at five o'clock. Once again, thank you all. Okay, I'll be, I'll we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>